Hello everyone and welcome to this talk about our paper, Fibromap, Understanding the Spacing of Vibrotactile Actuators Across the Body. Vibrotactile displays have been commonly used in situations where interacting with an audio or a visual display is not possible or recommended, for example while driving, or holding conversations, or while riding a bike. Prior work has also investigated the use of vibrotactile displays for physical activities, for coding tactile symbols for phonemic communication, and as a means of information transmission using 2D stationary phantom sensations. A phantom sensation refers to the illusion where uh, vibrotactile actuators that are placed in close proximity can generate continuous phantom sensations between them. However, there is a lack of systematic understanding of the required spacing of vibrotactile actuators. A single vibration motor offers a low information transmission capacity. Groups of vibration motors that are placed far apart lose the ability to generate continuous phantom sensations between them. And vibration motors that are placed too close together cannot be properly distinguished. This information is critical in order to construct grids to be worn on the body. Our contribution is Vibromap. It's a map of uh, the minimum and maximum distances possible across body parts and orientations. We included seven body locations in our experiments, the wrist, forearm, upper arm, back, stomach, thigh, and leg. In each of these body locations, we tested two orientations, uh, a transverse orientation, which is uh, around the body part, and a longitudinal orientation, which is uh, along the body part. Our two controlled experiments investigated the maximum distance between vibration motors where continuous haptic feedback is still possible, that's experiment one, and the minimum distance between vibration motors where vibration motors can still be discriminated, that's experiment two. I'll go into details uh, on the experiments now. For the experiments, we had shared uh, participants and apparatus. We recruited 24 voluntary participants between 21 and 34 years old. 12 of them were female, 12 of them were male. The standardized clothing used in our experiments was uh, to avoid the, the clothing having an influence of the, on the perception of the participants. We used ERM vibration motors fixed on a piece of cloth for vibration output. The motors were placed with 2 cm uh, distance. Um, we used a digital pen and paper for input. Our, our experiments followed a within-subject study design with body location and orientation as our independent variables. In the first experiment, we wanted to figure out what the maximum distance was between vibration motors where continuous haptic feedback is still possible. The, the user's task was, in, in this case, that he or she felt two simultaneous vibration, vibrations and was required to indicate if they felt a single vibration or multiple vibrations. We then calculated the threshold distance to be, uh, we then calculated the threshold distance using a one up, one down adaptive staircase procedure. And we also asked participants to answer our questionnaire at the end. The questionnaire evaluated how important the users uh, rated the location for haptic feedback how comfortable was the feedback on the body location, and how confident they were in the accuracy of their answers. Our results indicate that body location significantly affects the maximum distance possible between vibration motors. The wrist had a lower threshold distance in comparison to all other body locations. Back was uh, significantly higher uh, than the forearm, thigh, and leg. With regard to orientation, we found out that the transverse orientation resulted in a significantly lower threshold distance in comparison to a longitudinal orientation. In experiment two, we wanted to investigate what the minimum distance was between vibration motors where they can still be discriminated. Here, the participant's task was to indicate using the digital pen and paper where he or she felt the vibration. The difference between the location perceived and the actual location was then calculated to be the local localization error. Similarly, our findings here show that body location have a sig ha has a significant effect on localization error. We found a lower localization error on the wrist in comparison to the upper arm, thigh, stomach, and leg. We also found a higher localization error on the stomach in comparison to the forearm, upper arm, thigh, and leg. With regard to orientation, we found that uh, we found a significant difference between longitudinal and transverse. 
a transverse orientation resulted in a lower localization error in comparison to a longitudinal orientation. To sum up, we conducted two controlled experiments. Uh, VibroMap combines the results of these experiments to, to figure out the maximum and the minimum distances required between vibration motors. Um, we can, you can see here in the plot the, the minimum and maximum distance for the body parts as well as the orientations. For more information, please refer to, to, to our paper. Thank you very much for your attention and feel free to ask any questions.